Jonas Poer Rasmussen is the director of the documentary Flea about a man Amin on the verge of marriage, which compels him to reveal his hidden past for the first time. I'm Denton Davidson for Gold Derby. So um, you've known Amin since you were teenagers and you met on a train and you weren't, there weren't a lot of people that lived in Denmark that looked like him. So he sort of stood out to you, you've mentioned. Um, how did that friendship um, starts and then at what point in his life did he sort of trust you enough to tell you more about his personal story um well our friendship kind of started at the at the bus stop in i, I grew up in this very small rural village uh in denmark uh and when i was 15 amin arrived all by himself from afghanistan and stayed in foster care with a family uh just around the corner from where i lived um and we started meeting up at this bus stop every morning, going to high school. And, you know, there weren't a lot of um, boys my age uh, in, in the village. So we just naturally started talking together and, and became very good friends. Um, and I, of course, already back then was curious about how and why he had, he, he had gotten there. Um, but he didn't want to talk about it. And I, of course, respected that. Um, and from there, you know, our, our friendship grew uh, and we've traveled together. We've uh had you know new years every year together for a long long period of time we've had heartbreaks together um but all along you know he had kind of had this black box of a story that he uh, he didn't want to open up um and then like 15 years ago i i asked him if i could do a radio documentary about his story i have a background in radio um and then he said that he knew that he would have to share his story at some point um but he didn't feel quite ready yet but when he would feel be ready, he would like to share it with me and then we could do something about it. So I had it in the back of my head for a long time that this was something we could do together at some point. Um, and then eight years ago, I was invited for this workshop uh, here in Denmark called Anidocs, where they invite animators and documentary filmmakers to develop ideas for animated documentaries. Um, and I met up with him in and, and asked him uh, if he wanted to share his story and then we could turn it into an animated documentary. And he was um, he was very intrigued by the fact that he could be anonymous behind the animation because what you see in the film, what you hear is his real voice telling the story for the very first time. And it's really not easy for him to talk about these things. Um, so the fact that he could be anonymous behind the animation was really um, what enabled him to open up because he didn't want to be you know, in the public eye. Uh, he didn't want to meet people in the streets who uh, would ask questions about, about his traumas uh, because it's not something he could, you know, small talk about. So that's kind of where it started. And it is a unique film because it, it's not just a documentary, it's animated. And you're actually on the Oscar shortlist for documentary, animated film and foreign film, which is uh, quite an incredible feat um, for, for a movie. So what is that process like then for you as a filmmaker? Do you go into a studio to record the dialogue? And then how do you decide what, what animation you want to use and what you want the characters to look like? Because it, it's not like a children's cartoon looking film. It's, it's you know, it's very realistic, um, but but it's still visually beautiful to watch. Yeah, but it, it was a very long, slow process also because, you know, this is the first animated film I've done. Uh, so it was quite a, a steep learning curve for me to kind of understand the process of animation and understand the craft. Um, but first of all, you know, it took time to just do the interviews. And it was really important to me to make sure that that Amin was okay doing this. So in the beginning, it was just about creating a safe space for him where he felt it was okay to share his story. And it was just the two of us, you know, in my home. Um, and for the first year or so, a bit more, we agreed that we were just trying it out, um, that he could just try to start opening up about his past. Um, and then if it didn't feel right for him, we could kind of stop and we would make the film. Uh, but then of course, when we started to get funding, uh, we had to look each other in the eye and say, okay, but is this okay? Uh, are we gonna do this? And he felt it was the right way and the right time to, to share his story. And then we started, you know, the process of, you know, finding animation partners and we found an animation, animation studio here in Copenhagen called Sun Creature Studios. And they really helped me understand animation. And for a long time, we just tried to, you know, gather references, uh, figure out, okay, but what should, how do we create a style of animation that really supports uh, this testimony that was given to me by Amin? And it was really about, you know, keeping the authentic authenticity. So, you know, Afghanistan in the 80s felt like Afghanistan in the 80s and Moscow in the 90s felt like Moscow in the 90s because we didn't want to fall into, you know, uh, a, a children's style of, of animation because this is 
a, a harrowing story. It's 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 a true, very difficult story uh, to 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 hear, and 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 the animation should really support uh, this testimony. Um, and then we invented these different kinds of animation. You know, there's the classical two D animation that so that kind of shows things like the look like Afghanistan in the eighties, as I said, and that was supported by archival footage uh, to show that you know, remind people throughout that this is a documentary. So we have droplets of documentary or archival footage throughout the film. Um, and then uh, when Amin started to talk about things that's really difficult for him to talk about, his traumas, um, you could kind of sense in his voice that he start, starts to talk slow and more incoherent. Um, and, and I really wanted to show that as well in the visual style of the film. So we created this, uh, more expressive and surreal layer of animation that was to you know to support um, uh, that he kind of it, it wasn't about you know how things looked like anymore it wasn't about what really happened now when he started, talked about his traumas it was about emotions and we wanted to show that on screen as well um, so it's it's a mix of different kinds of animation and 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 this documentary footage to really make sure that you you have uh, um, uh, a honest uh, and truthful uh, visual style that kind of supports uh, the testimony that was given to me by me. And were you with Amin when he saw the film for the first time or, and if so, what were his reactions or, or what did he, what did he tell you once he saw it? Um, well, he was a part of the process, you know, of making the film, of course, but, but of course we saw the film together for the first time, just the two of us uh, when it was done. Um, and it was a very emotional experience. Um, and he became very emotional. Um, but, you know, he also kind of turned to me when the film was done and, and we sat just for a couple of minutes, he turned to me and say, like, I don't know if it's a good film uh, because, you know, it's it's his story on screen. And he was like, I'm, I'm not the one to judge if this is a good film or not. I, I get really moved by it, but it's my story. I can't, I can't judge it. Um, so when the film premiered at Sundance um, last year uh, and he saw the reception it got and, and, and that people really could relate to a story that was really important to him because I think he was a little concerned that people wouldn't be able to relate because you know he's kind of double marginalized being both a refugee and gay so so the fact that now the film is actually getting an audience and it seems like people really uh, get affected by it, it it really means a lot and what did you um, mean for the title flee to mean is it fleeing a country is it fleeing an identity is a sort of both of those things that he's encapsulating as a person. No, but it's, it's really both things, you know, but yeah, yes, because, you know, it, it is called flee and it is of course about the physical flight going from Afghanistan to Denmark. But, uh, you know, even more so it's about uh, this guy who, who's had to flee himself all his life, uh, you know, being a young gay man in, in Afghanistan in, and in, in, in Russia as well. Um, he had to, uh, not talk about his sexuality. He had to hide his sexuality. And then when he arrived in Denmark, all of a sudden he had to hide his past. So all of his life, all these years, he had to hide parts of himself. He always had to flee parts of himself. So, you know, it's really a story about uh, someone looking for a place in the world, looking for a home where he feels he can be, be who he is with his sexuality, with his past and everything else. Um, well, Jonas, congratulations once again on this film. Best of luck this award season. And thank you for speaking with us today about your work on the documentary Flea. Thank you so much, Denton.